and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. So, a new game has arrived on console. This is Dauntless. If you've kept an eye on my content over the last few months, you know that I've been looking forward to Dauntless due to the combination of concepts, mechanics, and that art style. Well, it's finally here, and I thought we'd go through eight reasons you should give it a download. And first of all, it's completely free to play. Let's break it down. Over the past few days, the creators of Dauntless have kindly given me access to the build which has gone live on PS4 and Xbox One right now. They're even kind enough to sponsor this video, allowing me to get this to you on day one. So thanks very much Dauntless. So the first point is Dauntless is free to play. Anyone can download the game, and PlayStation players, you do not require PS Plus. It's legitimately free to play. Free to play titles have taken a solid foothold in modern gaming, from Fortnite to Warframe. But Dauntless isn't Battle Royale, it isn't a shooter either. Dauntless is a game about teaming up with friends to hunt down behemoths and use their bounty as means to craft new gear. In fact, let's break down the gameplay loop and set the scene. We are slayers, monumental badasses with one calling in life to hunt down the hulking great monsters causing havoc in the Shattered Isles. These menaces are the behemoths, who are hostile in nature and threaten our very existence. If we don't say that, then we look like bloodthirsty heathens murdering the creatures of the lands. So if anyone asks, they started it, alright? The formula is in three simple steps. Defeat a behemoth, reap the rewards, craft and mod equipment. Rinse and repeat. Go back into the battlefield and do it all over again. After selecting a bounty, we land down on whichever biome that behemoth resides in. Nature, ice, desert, you, you get the idea. Oh by the way, we can collect natural crafting materials in each biome too. We are then tasked to find the behemoth, and usually the fight is broken into two steps. Initial combat, where you're looking for weaknesses and tactically deciding the best way to win the fight. And then the final battle itself, usually after the behemoth has retreated to another area. I've had access to the build for a few days, and I've already seen so many behemoths, it's daunting. Hey, there's a, there's a joke in there somewhere. Each behemoth is unique, with individual design traits and abilities. For example, one behemoth hid underground, replicating the game's healing pods. Quite a shock the first time he jumps out. Another behemoth used magma to burn my slayer at every opportunity. The behemoths start out with basic attacks, maybe a rush, a forward roll or a stamping motion. But the more you play, levelling up your armour and weaponry, the more behemoths you'll be able to hunt. The battles themselves come down to two important elements, the weapons and armour you choose pre-fight, and your ability to read the movements of the behemoth. Basically body language, small tells to know when to attack and when to defend. The game does a good job of conveying this information early on. The body language of behemoths in the early game is profound and easy to notice, but the longer you play, the more subtle they become. Many battles can be won with button bashing, but soon the nuances become important. For example, this behemoth uses electrical shock attacks, which, if they land, hurt like hell, but also prevent slayers from using consumables, and that includes healing items. Another beast summons minions to add an extra dimension to the fight. I guess what I'm saying is variation is key to this type of game, and Dauntless, for what I've seen so far, has it in droves. To go a little deeper, Dauntless encourages you to roll and evade the behemoths. This is quite important. The roll animation has a few frames which negate all damage. They are invulnerability frames. In the game, if we have good timing, it will give us a significant advantage dodging through attacks to keep up close and personal with the behemoth. We all instinctively roll away from danger, but after a few hours in Dauntless, you'll get better results in rolling towards attacks and hopefully through them. To a degree, it's high risk, high reward. I'm sure you've noticed by now the weaponry we have at our disposal. As I'm writing this, there are six weapon classes to get to grips with in Dauntless. Axe, chain blades, hammer, repeaters, war pike, and the good old sword too. Choosing the right weapon can depend on your playstyle or the beast you're going to fight. I'll break them all down in another video coming soon, but as a first step, try them all out. Go crazy, have fun. You may not want to try the chain blades, but after using them, you could unleash your inner Kratos. As a basis, swords are the most all-round weapon on offer, with the ability to unleash elemental combos. 
The slowest weapon is the hammer, but it hits damn hard too and has the ability to stagger the behemoths, allowing for extra slashing time from others in the group. The hammer also has a hidden weapon, a cannon built inside. Give it a try, it's damn cool. I find the hammer is the most complimentary weapon on offer and I personally am always delighted when I see someone rocking a hammer in the crew. The fastest weapon to harness are the chain blades, which operate just like they did in the God of War series. The caveat though is the drop in attack damage, but the speed that these bad boys can be swirled around in is astounding. The chain blades can be used at both close and medium range, with an added ability to leap towards or to quickly leap away in moments of peril. The axe is an extremely slow weapon to yield, making knowledge of how long an attack will take paramount. The axe can be charged up to add extra devastation, but once again, knowledge of timing is the crux of this weapon. The warpike requires more dedication than other weapons due to the attack meter building up, which adds a projectile to your arsenal. This meter can be claimed at any point, but the projectile will not be as impactful if the meter is unfinished. The latest weapon to be added to the game are the repeaters, two-hand cannons for ranged attacks. Let's not go any deeper just yet, I'll be uploading a weapon breakdown very soon. Check back for that. So now we know about the enemy, and we know about the tools of our trade, but how is all that presented? In our hub town of Ramsgate. Before and after every mission, this is our home. NPCs are here to interact with, upgrade equipment, craft weapons and armour. But here's the greatest thing of all. There are dogs chilling out. <laughs> go on, go pet the little bugger. Before I waste three hours petting a digital dog, let's look around. Just northeast of the main square is our smithy. This chap is the one who builds the weapons we use. As long as we have the correct materials, of course. Same goes for this young lady who will build our armor. By the way, armor is available in four types. The helm, the torso, the gloves, and the legs. Armor is primarily made from the dead behemoths we constantly execute. So if you're missing one item to make that helm, simply jump over to the bounty board and go back on the hunt. A huge part of games like this is the fashion element usually found in the end game. We want our slayers to look perfect, to be our perfect avatar. Here in Dauntless, we have the ability to dye our clothing with a mixture of standard and premium colors. That's all well and good, pretty damn useful, but the real headline in Dauntless is transmogrification. Put bluntly, your favorite sword may not tie into the look of your character. With Transmog, we can take that weapon and change its appearance without changing its attributes. In Dauntless, you won't be forced to decide if you want to look good or have the best equipment. This should result in very different characters running around the city. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Over the past 10 years, we've all learned to be skeptical of free-to-play games due to pay-to-win mechanics. Well, hear this. In many interviews, Dauntless devs Phoenix Labs have confirmed that there are no pay-to-win mechanics at work in Dauntless, and there will be none of those predatory loot boxes either. Hallelujah. Instead, Dauntless have gone down the hunting pass route with a premium version available. It mirrors Fortnite in many ways, or Apex Legends. We buy enough platinum, which is the in-game currency, and once unlocked, 50 tiers of items are there to be worked towards. I've been earning everything in the Elite Battle Pass and can certainly see the desire to stand out from the crowd, with a host of dyes, armor sets and demotes. Check out this Quicksilver armor die, it may be the only thing to take me away from bubblegum pink. <laughs> with the addition of Transmog, the Hunt Pass becomes more desirable. On top of that are Augment Cores, the Platinum Currency we talked about, Sigils and even Flares we throw up in battle. More than enough to make our Slayers look and feel the way we want them to. In this season's Hunt Pass, there's Transmog Ninja attire, and yes, I made it pink. <laughs> if you're new around these parts, I like pink. It's a masculine colour, alright? Don't judge me. There is also a storefront in-game to offer other unique items, with rotating content and a few relics from the seasons that came before us. So if you want to stand out from the crowd, the option is definitely here. As I've been playing the pre-release build of Dauntless for console, the main thing about the game hasn't been showcased very well working as a hunt team. Without a doubt, this will be the element which makes you return for more, meeting up with friends or making new ones on the battlefield. I definitely recommend playing alone for the first hour at least as you understand the mechanics, but once you've got down those basics, play with others. Debating tactics or deciding which weapons complement one another, and of course rubbing the hunt pass items in their face, it's the best part of these types of games. Okay, so I've prattled on for long enough, but one last thing. 
Did you know that there is an Epic Games Supporter Creator Code which goes with this game? If you fancy helping me, write in Adamaru, A-D-A-M-A-R-U, when you buy the Hunt Pass. It will help me make more videos like this one. Anyway, I'm sure you're sick of me. I'll get out of your ear holes. Hopefully, I'll see you on the battlefield hunting behemoths together. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time. Thank you.